Hi, I'm Eric Citrenbaum of the BC COVID-19 Modeling Group, and this is the video summary of our report for October 27, 2021. My usual quick reminder of who we are, um, we're a group of academics and uh, related individuals who uh, carry out uh, data analysis and modeling based on the state of the COVID-19 pandemic in British Columbia with the goal of increasing public awareness of where we are at, as well as providing an independent source of information and advice for decision making uh, for the province. Here I'll start with an overview of the report. So I'll start with our usual state of the pandemic slides. Uh, the thing of note here is that case rates are now slowly declining. We're currently at around 600 cases per day, and that's on its way down gradually. Uh, so we had earlier in the school year, uh, or in September, there was the beginning of a spike that looked a bit dramatic. And uh, we commented on that in the last report. That spike has now come down. Those case numbers have returned back to within range of the rest of the population. So I'll... Um, I'll just point to that in some of the data that we have and make some comments on that. Um, I'll talk about uh, the state of our hospitalizations and ICU occupancy, vaccination, as well as vaccine uptake. And we have some uh, info or news from out of province, in particular, an update on Alberta and Saskatchewan, and some news from Europe where there have been a few countries that have seen a dramatic uptick in cases recently. Okay, so here is our state of the pandemic graph. Notice going all the way back to the beginning of the pandemic here in BC in March, we had the first wave, which doesn't look all that intimidating right now. Uh, second wave, third wave, and our fourth wave with that dramatic increase in cases that we saw during August and the introduction of measures uh, August 25th, which led to a turnaround. And these uh, numbers here are actually just gradually coming down now, even though it's not really that easy to see that decline. Okay, so here um, we see the cases, the incidents per 100,000 population broken up into the under 10 group and the over 10 group. And so you can see that throughout the pandemic until now, the under 10s have stayed well below maybe you know half the incidence of the over 10s. Um, that reversed at the beginning, well, that reversed through um, through the, um, the beginning of the increase in Delta. And that's because kids are, you know, the under 10 cohort is not uh, vaccinated. And so they were, you know, more likely to get sick as a result. Um, and then starting somewhere around the beginning of school, there was this spike in cases. Now, our last report, we were in the middle of the spike. We now see this very encouraging decline and it's you know the, the cases among kids are coming back down into the range of the data here for uh, the over 10 cohort although it is still above so there have been a few hypotheses proposed as to why this might have happened the most compelling of these suggests that there might have been a rise in um, outside of school contacts just before and after school started with kids starting to socialize more in anticipation of school and that's a phenomenon that may you know, spike early on in the term and then uh, peter out as students, kids are, you know, hanging out with each other more in the school context. Okay, so this is uh, broken out across the health authorities, the same age breakdown, and you can see that uh, Fraser and the Interior and Vancouver Island all suffered this spike in kids' cases. Uh, there's some kind of increase here in Vancouver Coastal, but nothing like what we saw in the other health authorities. And Northern has had uh, a, a dramatic increase in cases across the board, um, which the, at least the kids portion of that seems to have slowed down. So here we see just a general uh, breakdown uh, among the health authorities and the, uh, um, the uh, health regions within health authorities. So you can see really across the board, there's either a flattening or a gradual decrease in cases, a little bit of an uptick in the north, but otherwise um, the same type of uh, sort of trend that we that we saw at the province level. So here are Dean Carlin's fits to the case data. Um, so uh, what you can see here across you know across the whole province is that we see that turnaround 
uh, at the end of August where we flatten out and this continued decrease that's projected coming up is uh, based on uh, the increase in immunity based on ongoing vaccination. Um, and you can see that's similar in all regions of Fraser, Vancouver Coastal, the interior, uh, Vancouver Island, and the north is slowing down and starting to curl over, at, at least in the projection. Um, it seems to be looking not so bad there, but they still are at very high case numbers and still have issues with hospitalizations. Here we see Dean's model fit to the case data again, but this time in the lower panel, you see the hospitalization occupancy data and ICU occupancy data with the same fit that Dean has been using for a while now to hospital and ICU occupancy. You'll notice though uh, the ICU data and now also hospitalization data is creeping above that projection for reasons that are as yet not entirely clear. So we had reported um, in a couple reports back that the, uh, the hospital and ICU occupancy ratio had been increasing. So in other words, of those who were in the hospital, a larger fraction of them, fraction of them were ending up in the ICU. Um, that seems to have been a temporary fluctuation and the numbers have now come back down to, you know, within range of where they were uh, previously, which is a relief. And we have a vaccination progress graph here, the same one we've been producing for a few months now, but you can see now the uh, first dose and second dose numbers here with uh, gradual slowing of the progress, as you can see in these lines getting closer. Um, but we're now over or creeping up on 75% uh, second dosed. So we've had the vaccine card announced and enforced, and both of these events led to a temporary uptick in vaccination, but um, not so surprisingly, that uptick has slowed down. It you know, perhaps convinced those who were on the border of deciding to get vaccinated to do so, but now we are back down to levels that we were seeing before the vaccine card was introduced. So, I mean, that's there's that's one effect of the vaccine card. The other effect is that um, people who are unvaccinated will not be in high risk situations uh, to the same degree, which will hopefully lead to a, a damping of uh, transmission. So here we have uh, an update of a plot that we've seen a number of times already. This axis shows how vaccinated each community health service area is. And on this axis, we have the average daily case rate per 100,000 for that community health service area. So what you see is it, through the middle here in green is a fit to the data. Um, and what you see is, I mean, there's some, certainly there's some outliers, but you see uh, generally the high case numbers are happening at lower vaccination fractions. And, you know, the lower case numbers are happening at higher vaccination fractions. Just to get a summary sense of what the regression tells us is that for uh, communities with 95% of eligible people vaccinated, there are 4.3 times fewer COVID-19 cases. That would be down here as compared to communities that have 75% uh, vaccination. So this is really convincing evidence at a community level that um, vaccination is having an impact. Here is the Alberta update. So uh, first to note for British Columbia, the contact tracing is still effective and pretty consistent. So Dean is able to use case counts as the, um, the basic fitting uh, target. Uh, but in Alberta, that's no longer the case, and he's now using um, hospital admission data to do the fitting and then inferring cases from that. And as we saw in our last report, when he fits to the hospital admission data, which the reason that's more consistent at this point is that, you know, being admitted to the hospital for COVID is more of a consistent um, uh, measure of, you know, how many people are getting sick than it, the contact tracing results are because they're just missing a lot of the cases up here. So the data looks like the 
wave, the current wave in Alberta is lower than previous waves, but in fact, according to Dean's back engineering of what the case numbers might be from the hospitalization data, they're actually, this is actually their worst wave. But it's clearly come down and, um, and things are improving there, including the hospitalizations in ICU occupancy. Similar uh, update for Saskatchewan. Here, uh, Dean is still using the case numbers for the, uh, the fitting. Um, and what you see is after uh, increase, rapid increase and plateau, they're coming down in their case numbers with predictions to keep doing that or projections to keep doing that. And the hospitalization and ICU numbers are, um, are fitting reasonably well to the, uh, the case model. So here's a global analysis of uh, trends in Canada, the US and Europe. Um, so what we see here is uh, Canadian provinces are in red uh, on the plot. My pen is always red throughout this. Um, and uh, Europe is in yellow and you can see the scatter of dots for Europe around here and the United States, each of the states that are included in the analysis uh, are plotted out in blue. So what we're showing is the daily growth rate four weeks prior and the current daily growth rate. And that's just to see, you know, how were things four weeks ago compared to how they are now. So now they're typically about 2% less per day than they were a month ago in all the provinces and most US states. And that's consistent with the increasing immunity in the populations, whether that's by vaccination or uh, spread of COVID. Um, in Europe, most countries have seen a dramatic increase. So cases are now growing at about 5% per day faster than they were a month ago. So the way we can see this is this would, if you're right on this line here, that would mean that you're basically in the same place growth rate wise as you were uh, four weeks ago. So you can see all the US states below here, there's a scattering of them above that line. But the European countries are a large number of them and there's some that are below the, the, the black line but a large number of them are already above the plus five percent per day change from four weeks ago so not clear what this is i mean obviously this could be a lot of things right this could be um, a variant that we're not aware of it could be uh, seasonal changes uh, it could be changes in measures and in, in fact in in you know many of the canadian provinces that's the case um but still, the trend seems to be very different in Europe compared to what's going on here. Um, why it would be a seasonal change in Europe, but we're not seeing that here yet. Uh, I haven't really checked the weather uh, in Europe lately, so um, maybe there's an explanation there that I'm not aware of. So let me summarize some of the key messages from the report. So the COVID-19 pandemic in BC is largely stable, uh, and we are currently declining at a rate of about 2% per day uh, in the case counts, the new cases. Um, so measures are keeping those case counts under control, but we still are at a fairly high daily case rate in the 600 range. Over the next three weeks, the uh, model projections indicate that COVID-19 cases are expected to decline across the province, including in the Northern Health Authority, as immunity levels uh, start to build following recent vaccinations. So um, there's some future risk we're thinking about because we're pretty close to uh, a neutral growth rate. Um, slight perturbations could put us into a, a growth regime again. Um, and that includes things like, um, you know, people getting a little bit more lax about following measures, seasonal effects. We, we saw a, a dramatic increase this time of year last year, which we haven't seen any evidence of yet, but that's not to say it, it can't happen. And, um, and we also are always on the lookout for uh, the appearance of new, more highly transmissible variants. So things that could be done to further bend the curve uh, and accelerate our, uh, our, our decreasing in uh, case counts is um, more uh, vaccination and um, improving protective measures, using better masks, improving ventilation. Um, so right now, 80% of British Columbia is vaccinated with children under 12 accounting for about half of those that are unvaccinated. And we will see some news in the next month or so on, uh, on vaccine approval for uh, the under 12 crowd. 
Uh, nearly 90% of the eligible British Columbians are now vaccinated. Um, and just a reminder that vaccination strongly protects individuals and communities, which we show uh, data in the report on, um, with a nearly four or actually over fourfold lower risk of um, transmission or you know uh, infection in communities with a 95% vaccination rate compared to those with only a 75% vaccination rate. And our neighboring provinces, Alberta and Saskatchewan, things are looking better there. Both case and hospitalization rates are now declining, and they're predicted to continue doing so. So that brings us to the end of our video summary of the October 27th, 2021 report. Stay safe, and I will see you with an update in a couple of weeks.